Hello everybody, and the two week wait for One Piece is over, we got chapter 962, and the legend and the hype of Kazuki Oda continues, and the more we go through this flashback, the more the jigsaw puzzle pieces come together to form that elusive puzzle by the end. We know how the puzzles could be formed, we know how we're going to get, we know how it's going to end up, what we don't know is how we get there. And there's a lot of time skips. There's a time skip involved in this chapter. That alone kind of makes me wonder if this flashback was going to... It may be shorter than I anticipated, to be honest. Because I thought maybe this flashback was going to end before the end of the year. Because Oda, usually when it comes to these flashbacks, likes to pace them to a certain extent slow or very well, depending on your perspective. But I don't have a problem as long as it's done well. But with this chapter, now it makes me see makes me think that maybe we're going to get back into the present time sooner than I thought. So, start off with the cover page, and obviously we're continuing the adventures of Capone, Chiffon. We don't really get to see Capone, we once again get to see Vito, and he's hiding because we've got the Marines. And they're looking for the serial kisser. It's being described as a serial kisser. You clearly see this word smile, so that's a, that's a reference to the artificial devil fruit, so... And you see more of the Marines actually with the lipstick marks. So that kind of kind of confirms who's responsible for kissing the Citizens Address Rosa. The two males in the previous chapter. It wasn't Lola and it wasn't Chiffon. Which they kind of threw a curveball and made you think that was Lola just because of her personality. But no, turns out there's this random serial kisser. Uh, or vacuum kisser. So I don't know what relevance that has other than the fact they're still Address Rosa. They're teasing the life out of Lola being in Dress Road, so I'm wondering what the end result's going to be. I still keep harping on about that because there has to be a reason for it. So, we start off with, obviously, Yasui and Lord Odin. And Odin, once again, he, he gets word about the monster living in Kuri, and he says, I'm going to go there and I'm going to raise hell because Odin's kind of like, oh, I can, I can raise hell, so I'm going off and... The room he leaves, he leaves his room in a complete tip. So, and you guys are like, oh, no, we'll just pass it off as a natural disaster. Being way too soft on Odin. And then this is where the plot twist was, well, is where the shadiness of Orochi is shining through. Because we also come to find out his wallet's been missing. And they're under the suspicion that, oh, or Orochi pretty much says, oh, I saw, cause it, I saw Odin steal it so but then Yasui knew that Odin it wasn't the type to like just underhandedly steal something he would take it for fate up front so the fact that he stole it uh, underhandedly doesn't make any sense so you know Orochi's responsible for taking the wallet so the plant the seeds are being planted for obviously Orochi's shadiness and Yasui is suspicious of this immediately but he does nothing about it so also, also, it introduces us to the rest of the retainers of the Kazuki clan. So, we have Denjiro and Kinemon following Odin around. And I love the face that he makes, like, yo, we love your boss. Odin's like, just get away, just get away. And he doesn't seem, it, obviously we get more glimpses into his personality. He doesn't seem to be the type to, like, have followers. or Even though he's a player for the ladies, he doesn't like it when people are following him. So, come across, I guess, his household and... There, there he just writes his own journal, which is kind of cool. He's like, because he's like, all navigators do this. All the big ships in other countries do this, apparently. I, I know it's the, the mentioned countries, but I'm wondering if that's something that Nami's going to do by the end of the series. If she's going to keep all experiences in a journal. I just found that interesting. Then we get, in my opinion, this is where the ch chapter starts to kick up a notch. Because we actually get to see Kiku and Izo, the, you know, the samurai on Whitebeard's crew. Yeah, we finally get him introduced in, into Wano. So, and what's really cool, and I, I didn't, I should have seen this coming, just because the there was striking resemblance in their appearance. But we find out the Kiko, the Kiku Nojo is the little brother of Izo. So, wow, they do look alike. And we went a picture a while back, and we thought was it should look why Kiku and why they look so much alike. So that was kind of cool. The the geishas playing guitars. You got. You got Kiku playing the guitar, so I don't know if that's a reference to Robin, but I just found that interesting. Then you have Izo, who's like, is like blowing the fans around, so that's kind of. And I love how that gets tied up into this. And what's really cool is like, 
I guess Odin, Kazuki Odin might just help them out with so a, a serial hairdresser, pretty much, just like going around the spe spirit of Kibi, going around taking people's hair, cutting people's hair at random. We, turn, we couldn't find out that spirit is none other than Conjuro. So like I said, the rest of the retainers get introduced. So that was kind of funny. Causing problems. Like the the retainers, with, with the exception of Kiku and Izo, the rest of them are kind of like troublemakers pretty much. So Raizo being tormented, he also gets helped out. And he's a member of the Oniwabash and Shu. So and then we go over to Kuri. And I love how we get... Obviously, Ajra Doji, a.k.a. Shudamaru. And first off, he's, he's cooking a snake by having a snake to... He ripped the head of the snake. And and I love how even even as a, a youngster, boy Ajra, he still looks like he's, he's the size of a house. So it's, that's funny to me. But boy, did Shudamaru ever get done dirty in the fight where Odin gets recognized as a daimyo after his fight with... Ajra Doji, but that fight just got completely skipped over. I remember the Shogun's bloodline, huh? Send him to me, I'll love to kill him. So that's where the fight kicks in, the cell is there. We know what happens. But I, just, I, I, I was kind of disappointed I got skipped over. Especially when it seemed like they were going to introduce so many things. But, but So we do get this scene of all the retainers, pretty much most of them. Did not make it up to where Kazuki Oda has been challenged by a group of party hunters for no better term. And he, he's like, I spell the odors of death and blood and violence. And you don't really get to see Ajra Doji, but you know his group's there. So the followers of Ajra Doji are Kuri. And they're like, ready for this. Odin with that look on his face, like he's about to mess some mess these people up. So he just, he, again, the comparisons to Zoro, facial expressions are there. But before they even get there, the retainers, but it's already taken care of. Kazuki Odin, it took me through the night, so he spent the, d the day and night dealing with Ajra Doji, but again, it got skipped over. And he's just pouring blood, sitting on the stomach of Ajra Doji, and we know how, is it, how he's a beast in the present time. So that's like, whoa, okay. So we now, we know he defeated Ajra Doji, we know this is going to lead to becoming the Daimyo, and we actually see this in this chapter. Ashra's like, just kill me already, I don't care to live. And this is where he accepts his responsibility, his calling, and kind of like grows up a little bit. He's like, let me wisdom and strength, I decided to become king. Obviously, referring to the daimyo. And the next page we see is like the advisor of the sh his father, the current shogun, or the previous shogun. It's like, oh, Odin transformed that hell into a village. And obviously now, Kuri becomes a village thanks to Kazuki Odin's efforts, and he's also the daimyo. And Yasui's like, no one else could have done this. And you see, obviously, Asuru looking on, so that's kind of cool. And you see this great shot of Izo, Kiku, Raizo, Kinemon, Kin Kanjiro, Ajra Doji. And Ajra Doji with a smile on his face is with the retainers fanboying over Odin. Odin wanting none of it. It's like, just don't cry all over me. And Ajra Doji is like, this is the first time I've ever seen peace. Thank you, Odin. And immediately just kicks Shantamaru. He doesn't want to hear it. It's like, Kick, quit that sappy talk. So I, I hear Daimyo needs retainers. So that's where I don't need a bunch of old louts. So that's where he appoints the samurai as his retainer. So there you go. So that's how I think everyone's tearing up. I'm curious how Izo left Wano. I assume it had to ha happen after the death of Odin, because we know Punk becomes affiliated with White Beard's crew. Plus, we know that Odin's going to be recruited by White Beard, but we don't, I don't know if that's going to be shown. Now, this is where we get the time skip. So, six years pass, 33 years before what happens in the present time, and now that confirms we are not getting Odin's version of Odin was not a part, he was not a part of the God Valley incident because if he were, that one got skipped over. I know a lot of people like like speculated that maybe it been the case given the timeline. No, I, I said it and I said there's, they're not going to show it because number one, Odin's not a part of it. It's his, it's his story, not theirs. So at this point, and I have another reason why the, Odin didn't show it and why I got completely skipped over. But the repercussions of the God Valley incident just will, it does make its way to Wano, to Kuri, 
specifically. And this is where we get Kowamatsu, a youngster, the Kappa Kowamatsu. People, we don't get to see who they are, washed up on the shore, and it's just being described as, what is this thing? An animal or, or a hairy man or a grotesque monster. So you see t like two bodies, you see like two people, right? That could relate to anybody, but right now the safe bet is probably Kaido. And what I'm really curious is, uh, we already got the meet, we already got the interaction between Odin and Raja already before the flashback even got started, before Wano Act Three begun. So we get, and I hope, I hope we get something with Whitebeard, just because like it describes the rocks pirates began to assemble their crews and went on their own separate ways, influence making names for themselves. I don't know who this person is that's got washed up on the shore? It could be Kaido, but Oda has a way of making you think one thing. And now that I think about it, those two could be Nekomomushi in Inuashi. That would make the most sense, given the fact that they're being described as two animals. That goes, like I said, the very short, very short chapter, like 14 pages, like especially after after a two week break. At first, I have to admit, after I read this chapter and the whole situation with Odin. Kazuki Odin versus Ashura Doji and the fight being skipped over. We know it lasted and one night and a day, but the fact that they didn't show any of that fight and it just ended with Odin sitting on the stomach of, of Ashura Doji with blood pouring over him, it kind of found disappointment at first, but the more I think about it, it could have something to do with the discussion, the re reoccurring discussion that Oda is going to wrap up the One Piece story within the next five years, the series within the next five years, and that perception of, oh, here we go again, with people not believing him. So maybe this is a way of like showing up what the naysayers, like, oh, Oda's not going to do that. There's too much story for them. There's too much story for him to get through. Well, maybe this is one way of doing that is to like quicken the pace when it comes to those flashbacks. So the fact that we jumped six years and we're, we're now 33 years before the present day, especially with the what we had the previous three chapters with the flashback. So, yeah, I, I'm kind of like skeptical at this point. Maybe that's the reason why Oda decided to like do this. And the God Valley incident aside, I, I knew that wasn't going to be incorporated into, into this flashback because it has, no, it has nothing to do with Odin. I hope this isn't a case where Oda is being rushed for the sake of it rather than just like he wanted to like pace, quicken the pace because he wants to get to better things. In this flashback i hope that's the case and not just oda being rushed to just for the sake of finish, finish the series to prove, prove a point so i don't know what's going on with that like i said i definitely think oda is going to finish this wrap up this flashback possibly before the end of the year i was thinking maybe we're going to wait till 2020 but this could be wrapped up way before then given what we've had in this chapter like i said very simple chapter explains so much i love how they incorporate izo and kiko's Relationship, I didn't see that one coming. I probably should have, but it's one of those things that get confirmed. We didn't get the God Valley incident, which I guess, again, I know has made disappear a lot of people, but this is Odin's flashback. So, and he's obviously, he obviously wasn't a part of it, so it makes no sense. Plus, I generally think when we get to Kaido and Big Mom, because now they're teaming up, that has to be the flashback that gets us some information, maybe a panel or two, of what went down at the God Valley. So I can't wait if that's where they're going with this. But either way, the flashback continues and the legend of Kazuki Odin grows. So those are my thoughts. Please let me know in the comments. That's good to do for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Like this review. Subscribe to for One Piece. Catch you guys later. Thanks, guys. Bye.